to tell you that old's halfway in my front garden. Thank you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You better add, lad. Look, can't you see I'm still in the land or not? I don't care if you're over the rainbow. I want something done about the destructions of my front garden. And I want something doing about the disturbance of my kip. You wouldn't be disturbed if you didn't infringe on people's rights. Look, I'll say one word to you, mate, and one word only. Wait. Wait? For what? Christmas? Precisely. Oh, come, eh? That was the deal, sir. I couldn't get no sleep. There was two birds talking all night. She could have gone in the office with me. Sofa was dead sound. Yeah. Me bleeding boots, eh? That's the way it goes, Blue. Oh, that's your answer to everything, isn't it? Well, you forfeit it every time, don't you? Yeah, just cut it out, will you? And you can get the scran in. Oh, wait, Terry, it is somewhere to doss for the night, and this is how you repay me. Well, you get me somewhere to doss, you give me boots to Harry for payment. You get the blondes, I get the dogs and the dance floor. <laughs> hey, hang on, talking of dogs. Oh, God, that's how I feel. Oh, do you always do it? Well, just, look after you, I don't know. Just kind of, did not you? It's a job, all right. No, always come off best. But you for a mate, sir. <laughs> Top of the left, mate. Why do I have to be the angel? Because you're all an angel, are you? No. No, not always. Yeah, hang on. But you could start practicing today. If he practices all his life, he'd never be a wise man. You'll never be an angel. I don't want to be an angel. I want to be a donkey. Yeah, well, you don't always get what you want in this life. You'll learn that soon enough. Cheer up, man. Yeah. I bet you're not eating properly, Heather. Oh, don't fuss, Polly. Look, the offer still stands. Sorry? Would you like me to come and stay? You look as if you could use the company. I'm just not used to living by myself, that's all. So, would you like me to come? Well, I could use some company. I won't be a nuisance. No, I know that. And I wouldn't talk about work. Yeah, but I probably would. Oh, well, I cook a fantastic moussaka. Polly, you're going to be late. Oh, just think about it. I won't be long. a break, will you? Look, I asked first and I got no joy. Yeah, but do you have to do that? If I want to do something, I do it and I don't have to ask you for your permission. Of course not. It's just that I'm not very good first thing. Don't you work? No, I stay at home all day and clock everyone else's movements. Didn't anybody tell you? No, they didn't. Oh, well, they should have done. And when I'm not doing that, I work in the back of my house with computers. Oh, you're a technocrat. One of the new order. Computers, rugby. Bad mix. And what do you think's a good mix? Well, now you're asking. Vigilance, discipline, timekeeping and tools. Don't you think you're losing touch? What with? The 20th century. Maybe, but I'm still filling my side in. Look, don't worry, H. I'm digging this pit for the delight of everybody, and I'll fill my side in when I'm ready. Now then, you're gonna give us a hand with something? 
Depends what you've got planned. Nothing tricky. Now, you just follow me, mate. Right. I'm off to Belinge. I'm off to fix my date. Polly, you can't leave the office. Oh, Hargreaves won't notice. He's out with a client till lunch, and then out with a good book until tea. All the same, I think it's a bit much. Don't worry. I'd never besmirch your good character, Heather. Oh, I should hope not. I won't even tell Hargreaves I'm your new lodger. No, best not to. Oh, don't worry. No one need know. Well, you can tell your friends. Have you met any of my friends? No. You don't know what you're saying, then. Well, Brookside isn't exactly swinging, is it? Well, I know. But when you're homeless... What about your flat? I mean, my ex-flat. No, your flat. Well, since I flooded the bathroom and locked the landlord out, I've been considered too irresponsible to live in such superior accommodation. He gave me my notice. Oh, so it's a good thing I had a spare room. You're very lucky to have found such a suitable lodger so quickly. Oh, you think so? I do. Enjoy Billinge. Bring me some rock. Will you get some aubergine soon, Osaka? Look, I'm going to have to go and buy myself a pair of trainees. You going to hang on here? Yeah, go ahead, then. Hi, all right? Aye, aye. I must be the only bloke around here at the Birds Waver. She was waving at me, Vic. Go ahead, how would you know? It's obvious. No, no I'm more air type. No one likes rats, Vic, there. Yeah, and I'll be moving back in with me mum and dad. How come? Bankrupt, are I? Shop. Don't talk to me about shops, Barry, lad. I never want to see another shop as long as I live. I go weak at the knees when I buy an echo. <laughs> Business bad, then, is it? Business is booming. Market trading on the stalls. Oh, well, you can count me out, so I don't want to know. Hang on a minute. I wouldn't count you then if you were the last man on earth. Yeah, well, I don't want to know about selling well, smelly on man. the market. Smell that. Look, Vic, not in the middle of the street, eh? Hello. Oh, hello. Oh. You two smell nice. Yeah, this is another woman acquaintance of mine. Oh, yeah. You've got a lot of good-looking ladies for friends, Barry. I'm sure they'd all be interested. Hey, yeah, I'll get a cop there. Oh, very nice. What is it? Come here, give us your hand. Now, this is the idealist. Now, this is just what you want for Christmas coming up. Smell that. Yeah, it's nice. Hey. It smells expensive. Expe expensive. You wouldn't know the trouble he had getting over this gear. And you know what? I'm not asking a fiver. I'm not even asking three quid. You give us two nickel and what my head feel, and I'm giving this stuff away. You won't get fresh cologne anywhere else in the world for less than two quid. Mind you, though, look at the bonus. All them Christmas parties. You won't have to go all dressed up. Just throw that stuff on. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, you'd be dead, Sam. Look, you'd be beating them off with a big stick. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll throw in the shower gel. That comes in a tasty little box with a felt bottom. Just like the way. Two quid, you say? Yeah. Teddy, you should get one of these for our Michelle. Now you're all right. I've got here something else. Oh, go on, I'll have one. It'll be for Christmas. You're waiting for many clients to pay you? I am. But I can't afford to stop working for them. I'm thinking of taking up juggling. Goes like this. I'll pay you when he pays me. And when he pays me, I'll order so much from you. And when I pay him, he'll order from you, then you can order from me, and I'll be able to pay him. But in the meantime, here, catch. Oof. Debts. I don't think I'll be able to juggle with the bank manager over this new order. Oh, you already have a large overdraft. I know. And a not too friendly bank manager. What, you don't get on? His wife put in a new order. Church of England uh, Flower Arrangers Association. She's the chief in our area. <laughs> now, the wife. Well, it's a long and complicated story, but... It cost them a bit more than they expected. <laughs> I put the subscription down as £200. The ladies knew it was only £2, but he's never forgotten. Always reminding me that a few notes goes a long way. Yeah, well, there's something in that. I well, sometimes give the wife a cheque for a million pounds on her birthday. It's extremely generous of you, Mr Johnson. I might as well be giving her the moon. Good. Right, I'd like to get down to details now. Shall we go into the office? Oh. Ah. Uh, go and look after the machine, Mervyn. Uh, take a seat. Thank you. Uh, consider it an experience. 
She'll get in touch when she sees it in the paper. I hope so. It's strange, isn't it? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Well, perhaps I shouldn't be discussing it with you, unless you want me to push you under a bus. I'll turn it in, Marie. Well, he's done his fair share of worrying. Well, perhaps he should do his fair share of paying house. What's that supposed to mean? The letters, the phone calls, the trip to the bank, the walking round, the catching buses. If you want anything doing, you've got to do it yourself. I'm not asking you for help. I've never asked you for help. Seeing as how you got so involved with it, it's only natural. Look, Marie, I got involved because I wanted to help, right? And I'm sorry she's missing, and I'm sorry for you. You know Summit. She must have told you something. She confided in you more than any of us. She told me not. It's as much of a shock to me as it is to you, all right? I want her home for Christmas. I want her back with her family where she belongs. Well, perhaps she'll come home. All I'm asking, Barry, is that if you hear from her or any of her mates, let me know. I've heard not. He hasn't told us. Well, look, Marie, what do you want? We went to St. Helens, didn't we? Well, a lot of good that done. But well, what do you want? Blood? I haven't heard from her. I don't believe you. Why not? It's the truth. You wouldn't know the truth if it hit you in the face. You don't know when you're lying. You just want an easier life looking after number one. What do you think, Terry? Think you better keep out the way of Marie? Just one more shove. Um, Evil. There we go. Thanks a lot, lads. Do you reckon that'll hold tight? I reckon you need some rope, Alan. Never know when a piece of rope comes in handy. Saved many a man's life when I was a driver. Guaranteed loss of life when I was a lad. <laughs> I think you could be right. I could use some rope any road. Rope? Right. I've got just the very thing. Hang on a sec. He's a gruff old codger, isn't he? We've had words about the pit, but he gets everything out in the open. There's no hard feelings at the end of the day. What's it for, Alan? Aha! You love a mystery, don't you? Well, actually, Paul, it's for a crazy tree. Oh, smashing! <laughs> Be like Trafalgar Square, this place. Well, that's the idea. And Samantha could be the fairy on top. Hey, that's an ace idea. Rope. Oh, thanks a lot, mate. Right, I'll be off. I'll see the tree when I get back from work. Bye. Ah, mystery solved, eh? Well, that's just what Paul said. Great minds, eh, Paul? <laughs> So she said George could be at the back and I could be at the front. But we won't be able to see your faces. Oh, but it's great. And it's dead dark. And she said she'd give me a torch, cos she's scared of the dark. Well, as long as she doesn't give you the candle, your dad'll go airless if you're don't not fireproof. Oh, don't let him hear you say that. So you'd rather be the back end of a donkey than an angel? Any day. Well, what about the wand and the crown that our Michelle made for you? We gave him to baby Jesus. Oh, Reddy, he's a bit premature, isn't he? Oh, well, doll, I've got him suddenly around it. <laughs> Come on, let's go and see what's for our dinners. So you've actually agreed an order which will guarantee you a substantial income? Exceeding the substantial is 10,000 quid. Mm -hmm. But I need three and a half thousand to order this stuff. I have to pay for the order. I can't swing it much longer. I've had to lay out money on new equipment. And I've paid for it outright. No HP for me. I don't know why. Well, it depends which system serves you better. I don't like paying interest. You can take the bank. They charge themselves interest on the loan. If they get it from nowhere, I have no money to pay for it, but that seems to be ignored. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> but they have to make a living. I mean, banks are in business as well, you know. I've never had a business head. I'm a bit nervous of business types. Run through your expenditure on plant during the last year. Hi. Um. Guillotine. Mm. Camera. Second hand typesetter. Small offset machine. £15,403. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at your tax computations. Hmm. Right, well, you've a lot of catching up to do. If your revenue and expenditure this last year is on a similar level to prior years where you've got, actually got agreed accounts, you could be in for a tax rebate. How oh, come? Cool. Because these items are going to attract capital allowances. But the rebate won't be in time for this order. No, no, not in time for this one. But you're good at juggling. Perhaps your bank manager could be persuaded to do some as well. Perhaps you could persuade him. I'll need all the facts. Right. Right! Jack! Ah, 
stand over there and I'll show you how to chip the ball, right? You ready? Yes. You hit his window? I think you hear Edna calling. You must be an Evertonian. Yeah. So it was you, was it? No. no. Now, come on, lads. I'm not going to shout at you. I just don't want you playing with this confounded football near my house, understand? But it, but it wasn't us. us. Well, there's nobody else around. Now, I'm not telling you off, I'm just warning you. Go and play in your own garden. Now, I'm not shouting at you. Gary, little George, come on, back to school. I'm just telling your lads, I don't want them playing football near my house. It nearly came crashing through my window. Well, it wasn't my lads. <laughs> your boys are the only people on the close. Didn't do it by itself. Talk sense. It was him, your next door neighbour. Well, I don't think so. Well, I do. <laughs> Well, do you like it then, lads? Yeah. I'm going to have to knock a hole in the roof, though. What do you reckon? Hello. How do, Marie? Hello. Come on, lads. Let's get back to school. Hey, Mum, Alan's going to knock a hole in the roof. Oh, don't be soft. You said so? Yeah, well, you can't always believe everything people tell you. Like him? Come on, let's get going. He's on. Wouldn't you if you just nearly bashed in somebody's window? We didn't. Well, don't play round there again. Oh, it's all right, thanks, mate. We like walking. So, you'll try and collect some of these monies owed to you? I'll get on the phone. Right, and I'll go through these with a fine tooth comb. I hope it won't cause you too many problems. It's my job. You've got to get this order. I certainly do. Or I'll be taking the teddy back. And the doll. And the doll. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it won't come to that. Are you sure? Well, as I say, I mean, I've got to go through your accounts, but uh, I can't predict an outcome. I feel our discussion today is born fruit, though. Shall I phone you Monday, then? I've got to get the order in. Let's discuss it on Monday. In the meantime, try and collect some of these debts. Can but try. Mm. OK. Anyway, Heather, if you need any printing doing... Yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming over, then. Right. Bye-bye. Goodbye. So this boat does come in handy, then? Everything I have serves a purpose, mate. It's just a question of working out when it'll come in handy. You're a hoarder. Well, you could say that. Edna's a hoarder. She's got everything, that woman. Right, mate. You grab her at the front, and I'll steer from the rear. Right. <laughs> oh! I'm looking out for this job, Alan. Hey, you OK? Yes, the old ticker. I'll have to go indoors. I'm sorry about that. Oh, don't flat, lad. I'll be all right. I'll have a sit down and I'll come out and I'll be with the fairy lights. Oh, it's no bother. Ah, oh, there's two likely lads look eager to lend hand. They look great when it's standing. I only hope the generator doesn't disturb everyone's sleep. Only joking. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. <laughs> hey, lads, you fancy giving a hand with this then? What's this, Father Christmas's grotto? No, it's just me trying to be festive under adverse conditions. Why, Samantha's still giving it all I don't know what's got into her. Mind you, I can guarantee she'll fall in love with me all over again once she sees the tree, with the fairy lights twinkling, the old snow falling. Hey, there's no quite so romantic as Christmas. What do you reckon, lads? I reckon it all depends what you've got in your wallet, Alan. Ah, you could be right there. Anyway, grab hold. Up we go, then. Way! Way what? Ways the sun. Go on, round, round, get round. Go on. God, it's heavy. Right, ram it straight in. <laughs> oh. Go on, pull her up. Oh. Up, up, she goes. Up. Go on, ride up. Ride up to the top. Oh, go on. Cracked it. Oh. You all right down there, lads? Have you got a soft spot for this, Trevor? No, I haven't. You seem very concerned about his predicament. Well, of course I am. I mean, he could have saved himself from his present state of crisis. And anyway, it's my job. Oh. Polly, I think there's one thing we uh, ought to get straightened out before you come to stay with me. I do not happen to fall for every man who crosses my path, so uh, 
Restrict the mills and boons to the bedside table, huh? Heather, I'm going to really enjoy living with you. Are you? Well then, what do you reckon, lads? I think it looks great, Alan. It's all right. I think it needs decorating. I fancied a life-size crib for when my mum comes round. You know, she'd love that, my mum. Real people, like, all dressed up. I don't think anyone would be soft enough. How much are you paying? Is it that bad? Well, I'd do for a decent amount, like. Oh, I was thinking more along the lines of a couple of mince pies and a glass of sherry. Almost at his line of business. <laughs> oh, leave it out, will ya? I'm thinking of making my fortune out to pay for you this Christmas. Here, yeah. look, well, see what you think of this. Have a smell. Aye, aye. Oh, it stinks. Oh, hello. Hello, H. What do you reckon, mate? It's blocking the light in my front window. Well, you're lucky to be able to see it from so close up. It's not much better upstairs. Oh, well, that'll be handy for Christmas morning. I hope all these needles aren't going to fall on my front garden. They're supposed to be very good for the grass. And don't forget to switch the lights off before I go to bed. All right. Anything else? Well, apart from that, it's very nice. Taylor, Mrs. Jackson. I believe your sister is still missing. What do you want me to do? Find her so you can send her a Christmas card? No. Well, you lot aren't going to find her, are you? Well, I'm afraid, Mrs. Jackson, we think we may have found your sister. Oh, yeah. Where? We think we may have found Petra. And I'm afraid it could be bad news. She's dead. That's what you're saying. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come with me and have a look at some clothes. I can't go now. I'm not going without my husband. Whenever you're free, Mrs. Jackson. Oh, I really am sorry to bring you bad news. Would you like a cup of tea? Cheese. I don't like them. Well, all I've got so far eggs. That's a good start. It's not quality I'm after. It's supposed to be a shopping list. I'm not going to get very far in one item, am I? Well, don't worry about me. Just get what you usually buy. Oh. I want to get food that we both enjoy. There's no point me filling the cupboards with chutney and fridge with pizzas like I used to do for Roger. No, because I hate them. Mm. Come on. Any suggestions? Oh, no. As you're so fond of eggs, how do you feel about chicken? Take it or leave it. Right, and take it. Have you got any sardines? No, I don't think so. Very partial to sardine sarnies. Mm -hmm. Two tins. Two? Sardines. 
Oh, how many? Well, make it a dozen. They're fantastic on toast. <laughs> Blame it now. I don't believe it. Is he up yet? No. You could have had a line yourself. Oh, I couldn't. I kept going over it all in my mind. I had to get up. You haven't any breakfast? Don't tell me you can face any. I wouldn't mind a cup of tea and a piece of toast. He'll want a cup of breakfast. You can count on us. He's no thought. Yeah. Well, it's not his sister, is it? God willing, it won't be ours. Is it? How do I know? I can't bear to think of a line there. I'm cold. Here. Put these in the toaster. I'm going to give him a shout. Sorry to bother you, love. Yes? But has that sapling always been in your garden? Oh, I suppose it has. Have you not noticed? What? There's one in every garden on the close. Oh. Except mine. Don't you find that strange? Hmm. Very odd. By the way, you wouldn't know who put my gnomes up the Christmas tree, would you? <laughs> oh, well, perhaps they climbed up. What time's your appointment? A quarter to eleven. Oh, come on, Shield. Give us a bit of a trim. Mm. Just hope he doesn't want to take it out. Well, he usually does do extractions on a Saturday. I know, that's what's worrying me. Huh. You don't want it playing up next week, love, when you're delivering your hampers. Yeah, I suppose so. Listen, I get it. I haven't got many of them left, have I? Pity that job's not for long, you know. Uh, it's better luck than one, kid. Hey. Is it true what our Barry says about this social security business? What, you mean if you use your capital up, you mean, on the mortgage? Yeah. Yeah. Will they give a supplementary benefit, then? Yeah. Our Barry's not stupid, you know. He's daft, but he's not stupid. Well, you never know with him whether he's telling the truth or whether it's another of his airbane screens. I know. It'll make a hell of a difference, won't it? Especially at this time of the year. I thought we weren't going to get the kids anything for Christmas. Will you keep still? We've always managed to get them something, haven't we? Even when he was small and things were really tight. Yeah, well, don't you let our Barry talk you into any of his brain waves. You're joking, aren't you? Can you imagine me selling cosmetics out of a suitcase? I don't know, love. You look quite pretty in this cape. I know you fancy me, don't you? Well, not at this time of the morning. Me. Get up! Lovely morning. Yes, isn't it? Hello? Hello, I'm Polly. Oh, yeah. Morning, George. Nice morning. I'm staying next door with Heather. Oh, yeah. You like the Christmas tree? Very nice. I was wondering if you had such a thing as a large cardboard box. Well, uh, you never know your luck. Would you believe it? Some beggars put me gnomes up there. <laughs> well, uh, come on in and I'll have a look. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Marie, this is... Uh, Polly. Polly, right, from next door. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you just off out? In a few minutes. Only if it's inconvenient. No, no, you're all right, love. We've got plenty of time. 
Besides, I think there's a box in the boys' room. Thanks. Box! I'm packing some things away. Your friends are Heather's. Mm. We work together. Mm. That's nice. You're going to be staying there long? Don't know yet. No sign of Roger coming back, then? No idea. Oh, hello. Hi. Here, Murray. Where was sir? In the twins' room. Oh, a nicer guest. Off out? No. Oh, I just thought... We have to go to the mortuary. Oh, love. These are any good to you? Oh, they're fine. Any yes. time, love. Come on. Thanks so much. Can you manage? Yes, yes, sir. Has there been an accident? No, it's just a matter of identification. Oh, what a time to call. I am sorry. Not to worry. Well, I hope everything's all right. Thanks again. Right, I'll go and get ready, then. I don't know why you have to leave everything till the last minute. It won't take me long, and besides, you don't want to get there too early. I just want to get it over and done with. Do I have to go? What are you talking about? Of course you'd have to go. I don't think I can. Oh, listen to that pair of you. Thinking about it only makes it worse, I promise you. It'll all be over in a couple of seconds. But they said... She must have been in that water for weeks. Shut up, Michelle. They'll only probably show you the effects. Anyway, the jewellery and that. Do you think so? Yeah. Besides, there's nothing to it. I've had to deal with hundreds of bodies in my job. They weren't family, were they? Look, all I'm trying to say, love, it won't be as bad as you think. Mind you, I've seen some pretty bad stuff. Remember me telling you about that lad got crushed in a lift? Oh, God! Now look what you've done. Oh, look, I'm sorry, love. I was only trying to cheer you up. Go and get ready. Do you want another cup of tea, Michelle? I know our Karen wants a double album. Our Damon says he hasn't made up his mind yet which video game he wants. Hey, our Damon knows the situation. He can't be expecting much. Anyway, who said he's getting anything? <laughs> <laughs> you have to get Matty something, love. Oh, yes, I know, love. But don't you be worrying, eh? Everything's gonna be all right. It's how Barry worries me. I thought you'd be used to him by now. <sighs> I'm just terrified. One day there'll be a knock at the door, there'll be the police there, and we'll be had up for receiving. Well, he said them cosmetics are all legitimate. Well, I know what he says. I don't think he cares where anything comes from. Well, he's not our responsibility anymore, is he? So if he's dealing in knockoff gear, he'll have to take his chances. He's right about one thing, though. What's that? That Harry Cross. He's a moocher, all right. Come down here and have a look at him. That's not for another Christmas tree, is it, H? I'm going to plant a tree here for me gnomes to stand around, not sit in. I can't compete with that comedian next door. <laughs> so I'm fetching that sapling up. What, are you going to take that one up? I'm going to plant it here. What for? I haven't got one, have I? Oh, well, I haven't noticed before. And everyone else has got one in their garden. Oh, well, that doesn't seem fair, does it, H? Some of them have got two. Go away. Obviously an oversight. Oh, are you? Probably the builders forgot to put one here. And they put an extra one down there. Oh. Probably by mistake. Wouldn't like to give his hand, would you? What to do? To rectify the mistake. Oh, I would, lad, only well, I'm, uh, I'm just off to the dentist. Oh, I was just coming over to yours to have a little skin wag well, as well. You can still go over, Sheila's in, lad, you know, all right? Which... Caught you having a bath, you big soft kid. Very <laughs> <laughs> nidda, will you? Well, they've got to be six foot under, you know. That's <laughs> going to make me spade. Get off. I'll around. see you. <laughs> see you. Here, give us me spade, you. <laughs> I feel sick. You'll be all right. Why do they have to keep us waiting? We are a bit early, love. A couple of minutes, you said. We've been here nearly ten. I can't 
can't. I can't. She'll be back for Christmas, though, surely. But I'm not sure. That's the point. I can't seem to tell what's going on in Sam's mind these days. She might never come back. What did she say? A lot of things I hope she didn't mean. Then she just went off and I haven't seen her since. I don't know what to do. Can't you phone her? Well, I'd rather she came back of her own accord. Oh. Well, I hope she does. But if it hurts your pride to phone her, you'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Do you think I should? I don't think it'll do any harm. Well, I might do. I'll have a think about it. Hey, one divorce on the close is enough. <laughs> I've got to get her to marry me first. Hello. Hello there. You look as if you bought the whole store. Yeah, well, I've certainly cornered the market in sardines. Would you like some for lunch? What do you think? How many did you get? Well, I thought we'd agreed on a dozen. No, you shouldn't have taken me seriously. They all like this. Identical. Oh. Why? In tomato sauce. Yeah, it's not just a pretty face, are you, Polly? I don't know how to break this to you. You don't like tomato sauce. I don't like tomato sauce. Oh, I'm going to have to get ourselves better organised than this. Well, look, one week I'll have what you like, the next week you have what I like. Well, you don't like anything except eggs. Well, I'll try and mend my ways. <sighs> I'm sure that dentist used a pneumatic drill. Bob. You'd never do anything like our Barry does, would you? What, love? I don't mean out of choice. If things get any worse. Oh, things have to be pretty desperate before I take that sort of risk. Anyway, I'm surprised you've had to ask. I know. I'm sorry, love. No, the only reason the police had come round here, Gail, is if I strangled our Barry, and I'm not joking. I can't think who he takes after. <laughs> I thought it was just a phase he was going through. You know, I thought he'd be married now and settled down. Could be my Uncle Russell. What could? The one Barry takes after. I didn't even know you'd had an Uncle Russell. It's because he went to Australia and nobody ever talks about him. Oh, aye. It's all coming out now, eh? Now that you're sure of me. <laughs> anyway, I don't think we're the only one with any troubles. I had Alan over here this morning. Oh, aye. Going on about Samantha. Why, what's up with her? Not speaking. Why not? She's done something to his computer. It's time to lose some big contract or other. I couldn't understand half of it. He's a funny lad, isn't he? He seems so half-baked and yet he's just a brilliant brain. I know. Earns a lot of money, though, love, I believe. I know. That doesn't seem right, does it? No sooner had he gone than Harry Cross comes in for a copper. What? You mean the minute we back was turned, you've had two men in here? One at a time. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Come on, Gail, just that soup out. Do you feel any better, Marie? You were right not to come here. Sorry. She had no teeth, that poor girl. That's how I knew it wasn't our Petra. What with that and the watch and the rings. Wonder who it was? God knows. The police have got a long list of missing people. You don't realise, do you? People are going through what we're going through all the time. Yeah. The copper said it could have been one of half a dozen girls. A lot get washed up on that part of the shore. You ought to stop thinking about it. How do you suppose I'm going to do that? What else happened? That was about it. 
Just an everyday job to him. The policeman? Yeah. All he was bothered about was whether he'd filled his forms in, right? Yeah. Well, I suppose you get used to it. Just like George. All them fire victims. Maybe we ought to go out somewhere. Cheer ourselves up a bit. I've got a collect of twins. But George's mother would have them for one more day, wouldn't she? I suppose so. Well, we could go to the cinema or somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Or mug you. Oh, it's not that. Don't be soft. Well, why not, then? Look, I know it wasn't our Petra. And that's great. But I just don't feel like celebrating. Well, it wouldn't be. It might cheer you up a bit. Oh, come on, Marie. Not tonight. I couldn't. You're back, then? Yeah, I reckon so. What's up? Why? You look a bit bothered. It's Marie. She's a bit upset. Why? What's happened? It's our Petra. Oh, have they found her? I don't know. How do you mean? We've had to go down the mortuary. Oh, dear. Was it there? No, thank God, but it shook Marie up just the same. It would do. Who was it? No idea. Did you want something? Uh, well, with you being a fire bobby, I was wondering if you got a ladder handy. Yeah, what do you want it for? Well, some kids have stuck me norms up that Christmas tree. I wonder what you were playing about at earlier. Come on, let's have a look. And Edna's not very pleased. Well, no, she wouldn't be, would she? And have a word with those two lads of yours, George, or I'll scalp them. Hey, hold on, Addy. It isn't always them. Just nearly always. Yeah, all right. I'll have a word with them. Hey, you got no chance, Harry. I'll have to get the engine round to get these little fellas down. You're joking. I'm not, you know. <laughs> have you lost something? No, I found them. Hang on, I'll soon have them down for you. Did you see who did it? No, but they look quite at home up there, don't they? Oh, well, they're not, and you're not having them. Hey, be careful, else I'll start charging them rent. Been in the family for years, them. Oh, family heirloom, so to speak. Could be worth quite a few bob in about 25 years. Hey, you're not selling shares in them, are you? Oh, you may well laugh. But stranger things have happened. Anyway, they'll be safer up there than they will on your front lawn. They'll be safer on my lawn when I get me fence. Fence? Here? But we're all open planned. You might be open planned, but this is my property and I'll do what I like with it. Right then, lads, come on. Let's have a look at this then. Where'd you get the tree from? Why? Well, is it certified? Well, it's the same as you and me. No, I mean <laughs> certified fireproof. Well, I don't know why. Well, I, are you thinking of putting fairy lights on it? I were. Yeah, I'll cup hold of this, will you? Well, I should wait until you've checked. Do you reckon? Oh, yeah. A small electrical fault could set this tree alight, and if the wind's in the wrong direction, it could turn this close into a fireman's nightmare. Well, yeah, it should be all right. I paid enough money for it. Yeah, well, it doesn't do to take these things for granted. He's right, you know. It's the same thing over the foundations. Oh, well, I'll see you, lads. I've got to get on with right. some work. It was Alan who was telling me he's had his done. Well, what's the matter with him? Could be subsidence. It's rubbish. Have you had your surveyed? Well, no, of course not. No, no one has because they're new houses. Oh, he's having you on. All right, you please yourself, Randy. Yeah, all right, I'll check. Hey, if you want to keep them gnomes safe, you could do with getting yourself a garden fence. Oh, it'd cost me a bit. Well, I might be able to pick one up cheap for you. How much? Tenner. How big is it? Six foot. Couldn't do it for eight. Nope. All right, you're on. All right, I'll pick it up for you next week, then. Right, thanks a lot. And if you want to help with the foundations... I'll let you know. Ta-da, mate. Anyway, he reckons it's the worst time of year to sell a house. I suppose it is. I'm not going to sell, Polly. Are you going to buy Roger out? I'll have to get a better-paid job. Mm, then what happens if Roger won't sell it? Oh, I'll divorce him. He knows it. Well, I thought you were going to do that anyway. Hmm. But in my own time, from now on, I don't have to do anything to suit any man. Quite right. We ought to do what you said before, get organised. 
I ought to be paying you rent. Well, wait and see how it affects my tax. That's the accountant in you, Heather. Oh, exactly. Well, I could just give it to you and they needn't know. Oh, that would do my reputation a lot of good, wouldn't it? <laughs> I ought to be paying for my food at least. I won't stop you. We ought to have a kitty. What? To finish up the sardines? You're not going to let me forget that, are you? If I'm going to live here, we really ought to work out signals. Signals? What if I bring a fella in? Polly, I hope you're not going to turn my home into a high civil repute. With your help? Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> How could we warn each other? I could pull the blinds down, aspidista in the window. Oh, like busy Lizzie. Yes, I'll get one on Monday. Oh, you're keen. I'm beginning to wonder about you. <laughs> no, it's you. You're just out of practice. Mm, very true. Now you're a single woman. How does it feel not to have a man cramp your style? I'll get that. Mm, thanks. Hello. Hello. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm Heather's father-in-law. Is oh. she in? Oh. Uh, Heather? It's your father-in-law. Hello, Dad. Hello, love. I hope you don't mind me calling. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't realise you had company. Oh, you remember Polly. She's yeah. staying with me. Hello. Hello. Is there something wrong? Well, yes, there is. Uh, Margaret and I, we've had a few words. Oh, you haven't left home. I'm afraid I have. Well, where are you going to stay? I was hoping I could stay here for a few days. Here? Well, I couldn't think of anywhere else to go. I won't be any trouble. I was just taking this upstairs. Only orange juice for me, please, Sid. Uh, do you go jogging every morning, then? Mm -hmm. Only at weekends. Heather doesn't, does she? No. She's still snoring her head up upstairs. Polly? Yeah? Do you think Heather minds? What? You know, my being here, only... I thought she'd have been more pleased to see me. I'm sure she doesn't. It's just the circumstances, you know. You think that's it, then? Oh, I'm sure it is. She'll be delighted to have her breakfast served up to her. Do you think uh, do you think she'll object if I wake her up? Oh, I'm sure she won't. It's ten o'clock. She's got a lot of work to do. Right, I'll go surprise her <laughs> then. Bye. Bye-bye, love. Morning! I wish I was 20 years younger. I know, you join me. Oh, what is that chase you, you little monkey? What are you up to? I'm getting the milk in the papers. When you get your death standing out there like that? I'm warm. They're lovely and warm, these. Well, you should be ashamed, then. What made you buy those things? They were a present from a secret admirer. Aye, and we all know who that is. For heaven's sake, get yourself dressed. Oh, I'm all right for now. And you're not sitting down to breakfast with me, looking like that. Why not? Have you seen yourself? Aye, aren't you a lucky woman? Don't think you're getting out of going to church. 
Not this week, love. I think I'll stay at home unless me back. You've no right to be digging up trees at your age. You've no sense. Look, I'm just a bit out of condition. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of taking up jogging. Oh, God. Uh, I don't want to disturb you, lovey, but can, can I borrow the car, please? Yes, of course. I thought I'd just take Bobby and Sheila to church. Fine. I mean, they must miss it having no transport. Oh, I'm sure they'll get another one. Oh, I doubt it, love. No, not the way the place... Are you going to 11 o'clock, Mars? Well, yes, but they said something about dropping that Mrs Cross off oh, first. Best make tracks. Right. Um, knowing how busy I love, I thought I'd make dinner for you. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, I often do it for Margaret. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, a matter of the joint, love. What about it? Well, I was wondering if either you or Polly could just pop it in the oven about 11 o'clock. And what about the vegetables? Well, I've seen a, a can of uh, carrots in the kitchen and there's some frozen peas, if you want. Mm, no, I think you'd best leave it to us, Sid. Oh, no, it's all right. I'll do it, love. It's just I've got to peel the potatoes when I get back. Oh, that, that means we'll end up making it. No, love, it's, it's all prepared. Fine. Right, I'll okay. be off, then. Hello. Hi. Is that it for the day, then? No, I believe you started. Hey, guess who I've just seen? I've no idea. Father Christmas? Polly, have you been at the sherry? No! Listen, wouldn't it be great if we had our own Father Christmas on the close? No, I, I can't say it's a thought that's ever crossed my mind. Oh, but it would, though, wouldn't it? And we could use Alan's boat as a sleigh. Polly, do you think we could talk about this as a later stage? Sorry. Point taken, doodle know about this. No, I had to sneak it out. Hey, I didn't expect you back quite so soon. That makes two of us. In a bit. I could deal with a cup of tea. So, I always get a date when I lie in. Well, you needed to sleep. You were a long time getting off last night. Oh, don't remind me. I couldn't go through that identification business again. You might have to, love. There could be other bodies, you know. Oh, don't say that, George. You're only stating facts. Well, if there is a next time, you've got to do it. Yeah, all right. Oh, stop talking like that, you two. I'm sorry, love, but I can't get it off my mind. Do you want to see the advert? Mmm. Is it in? Yeah, it is. Petra Taylor, please come home. Worried. Let's see it. Petra might be reading it right now. God, I hope so. Hello? Oh, hello, Margaret. Yes. Oh, yes, he arrived yesterday. Oh, for a couple of days, he said. Mm-hmm. No, no, I shouldn't worry. Yes. Yes, of, of course I'll tell him. No, no. It's no trouble at all. Oh, I like this. We ought to make a feature of it. Well, you do what you like, Sam. I'll leave it to you to say what goes up in here. Have you got enough to decorate the tree as well? Oh, I should think so. Look at the mess they're in. Yeah, I put them away a bit sharpest last year. I'll have to check them all through, see if we need any new bulbs. Could we have them outside the house as well as on the tree? I don't see why not, love. Sam? Mm-hmm. 
You still haven't told me what brought you back so early. You want to know. I've had a terrible week. Have you? How come? If I get another job like that, I'll pack in. <laughs> Rough, was it? It's got a round, that's why. What has? That business about Bobby's factory. Fairbanks? I had inside information. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Oh, come on, Sam. It can't have been that. It is. I know it is. The farmer's never sent me on a job before that no one else would take. It was a stinker. So? You didn't come back because you were missing me? <sighs> I'm not sure I should answer that. I miss you, Sam. Hell of a lot. Well, I'm here now, aren't I? Yeah. You still haven't given us a kiss, have you? I'm saving that till later. Well, when later? I'll let you know. Look, if you've got enough of those lights, perhaps we could put some outside the crosses. Yeah, I expect they really like that. I'll pop and ask them then. Yeah, you do that, love. I'll just check through the rest of these. It's an awkward moment, have I? I don't think so. Why don't you come in? OK, thanks. Hi. You'd better come in and all. Hi. Hi. Sit yourselves down. Oh, no, thanks. I'm not stopping. Neither am I. You've gone up me, I can tell. No. It's just that... Sorry, you were first. No, carry on. It's all right. Now, don't fight over me, girls. Look, wouldn't it be marvellous if we had our own Father Christmas on the close? Oh, aye. Would you be it? I mean him. Dressed up with a beard and all that. Yeah, I'll go and say you will. No, I don't think so, love. It did give Edna a terrible turn. Ah, oh, never mind, eh? Good idea, though. You Good tried. Bye-bye, love. she has got some energy, that one, hasn't she? It's a good idea, though. Hey, I hope you think mine is as well. Go on, then. Well, all I want to know is if you'd like to have fairy lights outside your house. I haven't given it much thought. Well, we are, you see, and we thought it'd be lovely to extend the lights to your house. And what will it involve? Oh, nothing. We've got plenty to go around. Well, what a kind thought. That's Great. very kind of you, love. Aren't you stopping for a cup of tea? No, thanks. I must say, you've got a lovely, cosy place here. Oh. Reminds me of home. A real home, I mean. Well, it's all Edna's doing. She really is house proud, you know. I wish I'd been able to alter things next door. But it's Alan's place. Every now and then I get this urge to change everything around. But you pay your way there, don't you? I know, but Alan likes things the way they are, so... Well, people do have funny ways, you know, love. I suppose so. Anyway, I'll tell Alan you approve of the lights, then. Why not? And Edna will be pleased. Lovely. Ta-da, love. Goodbye. Bye. done you some good. I feel wonderful. I've just asked Harry Cross if he'll dress up as Father Christmas. Mm. He says he won't, but he sounded quite chuffed about it. Good. <clears throat> there been any phone calls for me? No. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I've had one from someone called Mr. Godfrey and one from Roger's mum. About Sid? Yes. None for me? Nope. He said he'd phone before 11. Who did? You know. Polly, do we have to play guessing games when I am trying to work? Sorry. I'll go and get a shower then. Good idea. I thought he would ring. You're doing it again. What? Sorry, but I did tell you about Adrian. No, I don't mean that. You're doing what we said we'd never do again. Relying on men. Exactly. Sorry. 
And will you stop saying you're sorry? Sorry. So he hasn't phoned, so what? There, you're right. Polly, I think you're going to Ireland for Christmas. Oh. Would you like to come? Oh, really? I'd love to. Then will you do one thing for me? Anything. Go and have a shower. Right. Look, it was only a joke, love. A joke? I thought you were dead. Look, you might have known that I was only fooling around. How was I supposed to know? Well, the plug wasn't even oh. in the socket. Well, it's a pity it wasn't. Look, I was only waiting for that kiss. Well, you'll wait forever for the next one. Oh, come on, Sam. Where's your sense Get of humour? Get off me. Oh. Hold your head. Oh. That's funny as well. Oh, come on, Sam. See Samantha's back then. Mm. Don't look too happy about it, though, do they? Either of them. Right then, uh, just bear in mind that Heather might still be in books, won't you? Do you think perhaps we better not be, Sid? Oh, she won't mind, no, just a quick hint. I thought you had Roger's key. Oh, hello. I thought you wouldn't mind if I invited Sheila and Bobby back for the drink, love. Ah. Working on a Sunday, eh? Yes, something rather urgent came up. <laughs> well, come in. Uh, right then, Sheila, love, what'll it be then? Oh, a sherry, thanks. Sherry. Sit yourself down, love. Yes, do. Bobby? Um, I'll have a drop of scotch if you've got it, please. There's scotch right there. Good service? Oh, not bad. Father Daly. Very nice, but a bit long-winded. Yeah. <laughs> then there was all the Christmas announcements, you know. Mm. Hey, uh, Sheila, love. Oh, thanks. You'll well, enjoy that, Bobby. Nice drop of malt. Oh, thank you. Uh, what about you, Heather, love? Oh, not for me, thanks. I'd rather keep a clear head. Oh, come on, give her the rest for a minute. She's too conscientious, you know. <laughs> Dry sherry, please. Oh, so lovely. How long are you stopping, Sid? Oh, just a few days. If I can put up with me. <laughs> till the shopping fever's past. Yeah, love. Did if you... you don't mind me saying so, you two must be finding things a bit tight this year. Oh, I think we'll manage. Mm -hmm. Especially since Bob got this job delivering hampers. Oh, aye. Mate of mine put a word in, you know, Sid. How long is it for, Bobby? It's only for the week, like, but, well, it's come just at the right time, hasn't it? Well, it could hardly come at any other time, could it, you daft tape? <laughs> you see what I've got to put up with? <laughs> Can't yourself <laughs> lucky. Oh, hello. 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 What's this? Party? <laughs> I'll have a tomato juice, please, Sid. Right, come and sit down here, love. Didn't I see you jogging around the close this morning? Mm. I don't know where you get your energy from. Oh, I love it. It really wakes me up. Oh. And I prefer jogging around the close than jogging up and down in the lift at work. <laughs> Have you finished? Not yet. There you are. Thanks. We've, uh, we've got our lodging at home at the moment, you know. Oh. That makes make a lot of extra work for Margaret. Lots of extra fuss you've been. There's him playing the mat and she's falling for it. Aye, well, that's mother's all over, isn't it? Do you know something? I can, I can stand either one of them by themselves, but I cannot abide the pair of them together. Oh, by the way, love, you didn't forget the meat, did you? No, I didn't. See how well trained I've got it already? Yeah. Come on, sup up. Let's have another one. Harry, I'm back. Harry? Harry, I'm talking to you. You're not still sitting there in your long johns. Harry? Harry! Harry! What, what are you doing, woman? Oh, my God, I thought you were... You thought what? Never mind. What are you sitting around like that for? Like what? You're not dressed. I know. Do you know what time it is? 
Why are you asking me all these daft questions? I'm back from church. I know, I can see you. And you've not done a single thing. I have, I've had a visitor. You what? A young lady caller. Who? Oh, the one from next door, Samantha, what's her name? You'd never let her come in here with you dressed like that. Well, it didn't seem to bother her. How could you? Oh, don't be daft, woman, I'm decent. I can't leave you alone for five minutes. Oh, for goodness sake, why don't you sit down? I suppose you expect me to wash those things and put them on the line for all the world to see. Well, if you don't, they'll stand out there themselves. Oh, you're so thoughtless. And you would ask me what she wanted? You never buy anything for anybody else. I'll have to do all the Christmas shopping myself, I suppose. Heard and Alan wanted to put some fairy lights round the windows. I prayed for you today, do you know that? That was kind of you. What windows? The front windows, they've got some fairy lights over. Oh, well, I hope you told them no thank you. Why? They're common. Common near Christmas? It's like wreaths on front doors, I never did like them. Well, you can please yourself, I've told her to go ahead. Well, you'd better get round there and tell them that you've changed your mind. All right, all right, anything for a bit of peace. Harry? What now? Not in your long johns. Not take me a minute. Don't you dare. So now then. Cheerio, Sid. Nice See you, lad. Ooh. What'd you make of that, lot? I don't know what he's thinking of, inviting himself to stay like that. Right. You'd think he'd have had more sense, wouldn't you? Hmm. Oh, have I? <laughs> Saints go on there, though, isn't they? He's down here with Heather and Roger's at home with the mother. <laughs> I should think Heather will be glad to see the back of him. Aye. Some funny people knocking about, girl, isn't there? But you're glad you're married to me. <laughs> Get in. Go <laughs> <laughs> hmm. How's the chop? I'd have got something a bit fancier if I'd have known you were coming home so soon. Hey, we're not going to go through that no-talking routine all over again, are we? It's not any stupid thing to do. It was cruel. Look, I've said I'm sorry, love. It's not going to work, is it? Well, of course it is. Most couples have their off days. Yes, but we seem to have rather a lot of them. Look, it's not all my fault, you know. Oh, it's mine, I suppose. Well, I can remember the day when you had a sense of humour. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't find juvenile pranks funny. Oh, come on, eat your dinner. I'm not hungry. Man, a time I've just taken the wagon and I've driven off. No idea where I was heading. The further the better sometimes. Mind you, I always came back on account of that lad. I think sometimes I should have kept on driving. Margaret's expecting you home at Christmas. Ah, she would. You are going, aren't you? Well, unless you two can put up with me. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, Polly and I are going home to Belfast. So we won't uh, be around at Christmas. Oh, oh I, I see. Oh, that's settled that, then. Home for Christmas it is. Must have been a terrible experience. Mm. I couldn't sleep last night for thinking about it. I can imagine. After all, it could easily have been our Petra. It's terrible, a young girl like that. Oh, we've put an ad in the Sunday paper. There's a good chance of her seeing it, is there? Well, it's the one she's always used, and we've tried everything else. Sheila Grant says she's lighting candles for Petra. She's done what? That's what they do, isn't it? I'm not having that. Why well, not? What right has she got to go lighting candles? No one said our pet's dead. Well, she didn't mean that. They do it when they want something. How do you mean? She's probably praying for Petra to be all right. Oh. Well, well that's different. It's masses they have said when people die. Well, I know that. Who can that be? Maria, love. Yes, come in. You've taken your time getting home. 
If your dinner's ruined, it's your fault. All right, love, I'm not that bothered. Right, then. Well, I sat, then. Let's go and get me dinner. Thought you weren't bothered? Well, I am now. You know where it is? Yeah, but I don't like eating on my own. Would you credit it? A grown man. You've got to humour them, Marie. Where's our Michelle? Gone out. All right. I suppose I'll have to go. Edna, if you want to pop over for a chat later, just call, OK? Yes, all right. Thanks for the tea. <laughs> Ta-ra! Ta da Harry! You can come down now. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to Christmas. Don't be daft, of course you are. I'm only thinking of our Petra. Yeah, I know. And they're not here to enjoy us. Look, Marie, I've been meaning to say this for some time. Now, I know Petra's your sister, and I know you're upset, but we're getting it morning, noon and night. Hey, Hold on, I haven't finished. Now, it's taking over our lives, Marie, and it's got to stop. So let's make the best of it, eh? Let's muck in with these people here at Brookside and let's enjoy this Christmas. There's nothing more we can do. Coffee before you came down, both of you. I don't want anything else. You can't go to work on an empty stomach, love. I can do anything I like. You should be getting some egg and bacon down here these mornings. I don't eat egg and bacon, especially first thing in the morning. Well, it puts a line on your stomach, love, set you up for the day. Mm. He's leaving today. Really? I think he's just trying to find a way of telling you without upsetting you. Why doesn't he just shout it out as loud as he can? Hello. Oh, good morning, Mr. Johnson. Trevor. No, I'm not nervous. That's why I don't sound it. I thought at least the unemployed could have a lie in. Haven't been unemployed this week, don't care, have I? I don't know why you're going so early. Sure, people can't welcome you delivering hampers at this time in the morning. Yeah, but it's not this early, it's about the time we've loaded up. And anyway, it's the last day today. So it's a little Christmas treat. You can have a lion tomorrow, and I'll get the dinner ready. Great. Oh, well, Karen's coming to midnight mass with us. Well, I mean, what's got into her? <laughs> I'd like to think it was the Christmas spirit, but I don't think so. Well, as long as it's not the other spirit. And remember her last Christmas? Mm, well, could I forget it? I hope she's learned her lesson. What was it our Damon said when she was throwing up down the toilet? Oh, don't. He said she's talking to God on the big white telephone. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> That'll do. It won't be long, you know. Well, I got up a bit early, didn't I? Do you know what's been good about this week? Don't say I've made out the house every day. No, not the money either, although it's been very welcome. You! What? Your old self again. Hmm. Barry! You've worked hard as well, you know. I know you have, love. It's been great seeing you back in the old routine. You know, falling asleep in the chair, making the furniture bounce with your snoring. And then tight to a snooze after that honest day's work. <laughs> Almost honest. Well, it doesn't bother my conscience taking 60 necker for what I've done this week, and that's what I regard as honesty. 
Fulfilling the role of man the hunter, eh? Yeah. Anyway, today's the executive ambulance. Executive ambulance? Yeah, well, we started the week off with the small ones. Then we've done the medium ones. Now we've gone the posh end of the scale. These must weigh, what, 40 or 50 pounds? Watch man the hunter doesn't give himself an earlier. Well, Fairbanks had a course on kinetic lifting last year, didn't he? Mm. You just take the weight and the strain on your strongest muscles, which is there, your thigh muscles. Mm. Mm. Just keep your back straight. Mm. I'm impressed. Well, you two at it again. Oh, your dad's just demonstrating hunting techniques. The art of hamper lifting, sonny boy. Now, well, look, Dad, one hand rises, and I'm going to make twice as much as you today. Don't start, love. Yeah, but what's a train joiner doing, flogging Ben Fair for you? Yeah, well, a train fitted to have a flog Christmas hampers. <laughs> and what about a bunch of clowns running the country? That's a nice one, kid. Uh huh. Well, I must go now, Trevor. Yes, I don't want to be late. Uh, yes. Bye bye. <gasps> Do you think his business will survive? Polly, if he was selling worry or inefficient accounting practices, he'd be a millionaire. I don't know. I want to get him through, but... Ooh. I don't think you should get so personally involved. Oh, don't you now? Well, he's a bumbling so-and-so, isn't he? Oh, he's a small-timer, struggling to survive. But listen, if everyone could solve their own accounts, I could be looking for a job. Mm, so what time do you see his bank manager? 3.15. You shouldn't encourage him to phone you at home, love. You'll never get any peace. Talking of peace and quiet... But before you say anything, I want you to consider this. Consider what? Well, I know it's a bit awkward, but I've got to get back home for Christmas. And otherwise, we'll all be in the sticks. Oh, I realise that. Then come back with me, and you as well, if you like. Oh, thanks anyway. I've already made plans. So that's that, then, is it, ever? Sid, I thought you'd learnt your lesson in Southport. I'm not talking about another reconciliation, love. Don't worry about me. I'll be going home to Ireland. Oh, well, as long as you're somewhere with company. Yes, don't worry about me. Look, I can't leave you unless I know you're going to be all right. You're making me feel like a helpless puppy. Well, we just want to do what's best for you, love. Yes, yes, I know. Polly, come on, we're going to be late. Oh, hey, you've got to be joking, haven't you, Barry, lad? Dad, you just do not appreciate good gear, that's all. Good gear? What's it called? New Brighton Prom or Midnight on the Mersey? It's French, Dad. Oh, French? That's French. We must live three miles from Paris. It's probably churned out in some Algarve. <laughs> I'll get it. Me and Terry will get rid of it. You'll see. Won't even have to break sweat. It's as long as you and Terry don't break the law. All right, Bob. Hi, Matty. Hello, Sheil. Barry. All right, Matt. Do you want a cup of tea, love? No, thanks. I've just had one, Queen. Maybe we'll have to work this time last year, lad, won't we? We still haven't got a proper job now. Ah, oh, come on. you soon get used to it. Hey. I look forward to the hunter's safe return. Ta-da. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> See you. Oh, wish I could get your dad a job for Christmas. Yeah? What have you got him on? New watch. Where is he? No fiddling with it. Not one of your knock-off things, you know. It cost me a few, Bob. I'm not our demon, ma'am. I only want to have a look. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's smart, that, isn't it? Thought you had no money, though. I haven't. Sold something. What did you sell? Don't tell anybody. What was it, man? Two silver cruet sets. Presents from your party. Yeah, don't worry, I've got three left. <laughs> Stop fiddling, come on. Hey, man. What? What am I getting for Crimble? Uh, you just have to wait and see what Father Christmas brings you, won't you? You manage, don't you, love? Yes, don't worry about me. I feel terrible leaving you, love, but I've got, I've got to get back Sid, to Sid, stop feeling responsible. It was Roger who was unfaithful, and it was me who decided not to have him back. So you can go home with a clear conscience. Yes, I, I know, love, but... Excuse me for interrupting. Hello, Marie. I've just had a call from the fire station. It's George. What's the matter? Some bloke phoned who didn't know the facts. George is on nights and he's been taken to the hospital. The bloke that phoned is on the day shift, so he hasn't seen him. Well, what did he say? I just said that George has had an accident. He's been taken to the hospital. He'll be late home, but it isn't anything serious. Oh, that's not so bad. Wait, was Angel fighting a fire? I don't know. I just want to get down to that hospital. I was wondering if you could just... Well, I'm oh, a bit yeah. pushed for time. Oh, it's all right. It won't be a sec. We're going to be late. I'm going to miss Adrian. Oh, yes. Mustn't miss Adrian. You'd just better get there for ten past nine. Oh, I'm sure they'll understand. I mean, it is an emergency. Jonathan Hargreaves is fond of saying that lateness is only due to slack. Well, just explain that you're next door now, there's a fireman. Whenever you're ready, Heather. 
hope things work out all right, love. Oh, thanks very much. Can't be so bad. There wouldn't have been so vain. Oh, the trouble with him is he's too brave for his own safety. Oh, sorry. Can we get one of these big hampers? Back at the depot. What's the first number, lad? Um, 28. 28. Right, Dan, I'm off. Hey, are you honouring us with your presence at the tea table, then? I don't know. If me and Teddy do all right, might be a steak job in town. Mm, that'd be nice. You don't mind if I join you, do you? No, not at all. Give you the bell after if you want. All right. Just in case you don't make your fortune, I'll stick a casserole in the oven. Oh, have faith, will you? But we'll see. Um, come on. What am I getting for Kimball? I've told you. You'll have to wait and see what Father Christmas brings. OK, ta-da. Blimey, <laughs> Davey, he's handy, Matty. Oh, you're just out of condition. Oh, what's that, Wallace? I feel better for knowing that. Listen, it'll get you fit. You might be running alongside me in next year's Mersey Marathon. All the best, Queen. Oh, oh we Merry Christmas! What's got into you? Oh, a tip. Merry Christmas, love. Hey, we're sharing that, you know. What's up with you then? Tripped over an elf. I think it may be broken. The elf? The wrist. Who's minding your godotto then? Well, you better get it mended quick. Why? All them chimneys you're gonna have to climb down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's the first job I've had for a year and all. It's hardly regular work, is it? Yeah. What was your last job? Huh? What was your last job a year ago? Well, that was Father Christmas as well. What's up with you, then? There's nothing up with me. Why? Well, you know. Oh, being in casualty, you mean? You're waiting for somebody. My husband. He's had some sort of facial injury, they said. He did it at work. Nothing serious, I hope. They said it wasn't. You never know. They might just be saying that. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. You're a right bundle of fun, you are, aren't you? You're supposed to be spreading happiness and that. Not frightening people, saying he's injured, he might be serious. Well, I didn't say that. It sounded like that to me. Not myself, my wrist hurt. If you've taken the job on, you should act accordingly. How do you mean? I'm sitting here worried sick about my husband, George. You should be cheering me up. I'm injured. Your father, Christmas. I'm probably redundant. I won't be able to carry on. Doesn't look that serious to me. You could still... Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yes. How would you like it, sitting in a grotto with a broken wrist, having loads of kids crawling all over you? It's a job. It's not a very dangerous job. Not like my husband's. What does he do, then? He's a fireman. Did he get injured at fighting a fire? Don't know. They know nothing at reception. They just said he could go home after treatment. I've been here an hour now. I've been here a long time. The trouble with George is his dedication to duty. I'll probably have to lock him in the house to stop him going to work. You have to be brave on this job and all, you know. Brave? Don't talk soft. I have to face hundreds of people and kids every day. That isn't bravery. Bravery is risking life and limb every time you go to work. Not knowing what you're going to face when that bell rings. That's bravery. What George does. He was probably injured rescuing somebody. Putting other people first. Disregarding personal safety. What have you done, George? I've broken my nose. How long? I was playing snooker with Ron Bennett. 
You miscued a deep screw in the white hit me in the face. <laughs> Come on, you just get off home. <laughs> Go on, hey, lad. What is it? Pine the pint down the swamp. Well, I'd sooner work like through and get it over with, Bobby. Matty, you might be fitted, haven't you, lad? But I think my eyesight's better than yours. Oh, what do you mean? Well, don't finish. Finito completed. All delivered, lad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby. Matty, get it, lad. Listen, one more load, and you've got £60 in your back pocket, and all Christmas to spend it. Plus our tips. Yeah, I've got 60 pence. I've got 70. Yeah. But don't forget we're sharing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could made it a pint. <laughs> oh, how have we got on, sir? I haven't sold any. If the poor buddy wants to know, what about you? Well, I sold once to this woman. Oh, well, that's something. Yeah, but then Sammy came back from the toilet, said she wanted the money back. Oh, you didn't give it to her, did you? I thought it was best for the company, eh, Mr. Ted? wonder why nobody's buying This woman reckons there's something wrong with it, Sammy. It smells all right to me. <laughs> yeah, well, the nice boxes as well. Perhaps there isn't a lot of money about. Well, the fellow who came in with the chocolates before made a bomb. Oh, let's slide down here, Alice. Yeah, May as well. There's nothing happening here, is there? No. Trevor. It's my business in jeopardy. Christmas? Suppose you won't give us the overdraft. Oh, we've been through all this. Just wait and see. Try to look confident. Right. Do you plan for Christmas? Well, I hope to be printing. Well, not on Christmas Day. No. We have the wife's relations over to lunch. Are there many of them? Seems like half a billion. <laughs> And there's arguments about rugby league between the top enders and the bottom enders. Top enders and bottom enders? Top enders support Wigan and bottom enders support St. Helens. I suppose bottom enders could support Wigan and top enders support the Saints. Sounds very complicated. Well, they used to play each other on Boxing Day. I don't know if they still do. Top enders and bottom enders? Wigan and St. Helens. I'd rather be printed myself. I hope he gives us this overdraft. We can only do our best. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Johnson. And, uh, uh, Heather, Mrs. Huntington. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Huntington. How do you do? How's Jonathan? Oh, he's fine. Sends his regards. Reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Do come in. Is he a hard man to work for? Sometimes. Thank you. Well, now, Mr. Johnson. You have requested a further overdraft facility of £3,000. Yes, Mr. Hume. Well, would you mind giving me a little more background than you've given your letter? I, I've received an order from a holiday company to print out some sticky back labels. Uh, the sort people put on their cases. Is it a firm contract? Yes, and a good one. Well, then I don't quite understand. If you've been offered a firm contract, on which presumably you're going to make a profit, your normal trading credit facility should see you through. Or are you thinking of taking on further capital investment to meet this order? No, no, I, I just want to buy in my raw materials, but the wholesalers won't give me credit, you see. Why won't they give you credit? Well, you know what it's like. Do you have many creditors, people you owe money to? No, not now. I've always been one for paying me way. In fact, at this moment in time, I can safely say that I don't owe anybody anything. Except the bank. Oh, yes, there is the bank. And it is a sizable overdraft. If I may come in at this point, Mr. Hume, the order in question will have a significant impact on Mr. Johnson's cash flow within a relatively short period of time. And I do with have due further... respect, Mrs. Huntington, Mr. Johnson's past dealings with the bank do not inspire complete confidence that it is that simple. With due respect, Mr. Hume, I have only recently become Mr. Johnson's accountant, and I will ensure he receives sound financial guidance. I trust your experience of J.D. Hargreaves to date should confirm this. Well, Mrs. Huntington, listening. Well, as I was about to say, I do have more information to support Mr. Johnson's request for increased facilities. I've 
gone into his past three years' tax computations in detail and found something which is definitely to our advantage. Good. During the past financial year, Mr. Johnson has invested in capital equipment to the total of fifteen and a half thousand pounds. And this is far higher than in previous years and should be very favourable to his tax situation. Yes, I didn't know, you see, until Mrs. Huntington sorted my books out. Hurry up and get inside. You are. Before anybody sees you. It wasn't that when you were dragging me around the supermarket. Well, nobody knew you there. This is home. It isn't really home. Oh, don't start that again. Just get inside. A broken nose is nothing to be ashamed of, Marie. It's not like having a social disease. Don't talk like that in the streets. And you made a right fool of me in front of that Father Christmas. I only told you what happened. Well, why couldn't you have said that you fell out of a tree or something? What would I be doing up a tree? Rescuing a cat. That's what firemen do, isn't it? Ah, oh, and George. Nice to see you up and about again, lad. Yeah, I'm all right, really. Yeah, well, he's got to get in and rest. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What have you been doing? I've broken it. These people who think that you lot, you spend half your time sleeping, the other half playing snooker, they should see you now, George. Yeah, well, uh, we don't want him to catch flu as well, so uh, get yourself inside, George. Just before you go, love, it's about Heather. Yeah. Well, I'm on my way back to Manchester. I'm a bit bothered about leaving her over the Christmas break. Oh, don't you think Roger will be back for Christmas, then? Uh, no, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put up with him at home. You don't think it's going to end in divorce, do you? Hey, don't be nosy, Marie. It's all right. I think everybody else knows. Poor girl. Anyway, I just thought I'd have a word with one or two of the neighbours, you see. Ah, uh, that's what neighbours are for, said. Don't worry. We'll rally round. Thank you very much, love. Thank you. George? 3,000 for a guillotine, 1,500 for a camera, 2,000 for a second-hand IBM typesetter, 9,000 for a small offset machine, 15,500. That second-hand typesetter was a cracking good buy. I appreciate that there's likely to be nil tax payable this year, but where do we stand on previous years? Mr. Johnson's last tax bill wasn't high, as I remember. It required increased facilities, but it won't give much of a rebate. Agreed, but in these particular circumstances, we claw back three years, which will cover the 3,000 we're looking for. You've obviously been talking to the Inland Revenue chap yet. <laughs> I've cleared the ground with our own tax people and prepared the way for the local inspector, and they agree we have a good case. But I'll bet they didn't put anything in writing. See, what you're asking me to do is gamble on the whim of the Inland Revenue inspector. Hardly that. What we're asking for is a short-term increase in overdraft facilities to enable Mr. Johnson to carry an order which will improve his cash flow, and indeed his position with the bank. The tax rebate is merely icing on the cake. Bob will be sorry I missed you, Sid. Hi, I'm sorry I missed him, but uh, I've got to get back. So, uh, if you don't mind, Sheila. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. I mean, I know she's not daft, and I suppose she'd be able to cope. But, well, you know, she's, she's only a young woman when all's said and done. I'm hoping Roger might come back one day. Ah, well, he's back with us now. And I thought, well, well, shut up, if you know what I mean. Oh, I do. I do know what you mean. They're always kids to us, though, aren't they? No matter how old they get. And, of course, what with her parents being back in Ireland, well, that's it. Any road, I know she's got some good neighbours. I've, uh, I've had a word with Marie and Annabelle, and they're just as cooperative. Oh, Marie was, was she? <laughs> she's really settled in over there, you know. Aye. It's a rum do, isn't it? Somebody just disappearing like that. Well, she's probably carving a new life out for herself somewhere else. Aye, well, I suppose... She did have a bad time of it here. Mm, Gavin dying and the baby. Hi. Must have had a terrible effect. Oh, by the way, Annabelle was saying that uh, her daughter's coming home for Christmas. Lucy, is Aye. she? Oh, oh, that'll be nice for them. Ah, she's saying it through to bits. Anyway, I must be off, love, so give my best regards to all your lot. I will do. And give ours to Margaret and Roger. Uh, all the best. Hey, we will see you again, won't we, Sid? Well, I hope so. Somebody's got to look after our Heather. Bye-bye, love. Bye. I don't think you should tone it down a bit. Whatever do you mean? Well, you've only just met Mr. Hume. I've known him a long time. Mr. Johnson, are you suggesting I'm not conducting this in the proper manner? Oh, I think you're doing very well, but... But? It's just that Mr. Hume's very big in Billy and Jack. Roachy Club and all that. You seem to be enjoying this, Heather. Well, there's no point being miserable about it. You have to show confidence. That's easy said. My business is on the line. So is my career. Hey? Well, how do you think I could get my boss to take me as a serious career person if I couldn't persuade Mr. Hume to extend your overdraft facilities? Never thought about that. I have almost as much to lose. And don't look so serious. I think we're going to be all right. All I can 
can say at the moment is that I need more time to consider it. Oh! Of course, Mr. Hume, I understand. All right. Well, it's been good talking to you, Mrs. Huntington. Would uh, an appointment tomorrow be beneficial? I don't think that would be necessary. A telephone call should be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Shall I call you Mr. Johnson or, uh, or well, I've promised to take their wife Christmas shopping tomorrow. But I can cancel it. I mean, this is one of the most important phone calls I've ever had to wait for. Oh, don't disappoint your wife. Let Mr. Hume contact me and you ring into our office. Nothing could be simpler. I'll phone about 12 noon. in like that. Barging in. Just walking into my old house. I didn't expect you back so soon. Well, why not? I've only been down to paper shop. Thought you'd have gone in the swan. No, I'll go down there this afternoon. Don't know why you've cancelled the paper anyway. How much are you saving yourself? A penny a day? It's not the finance game, is it? It's the routine. It gets me moving yeah. first thing of the morning, doesn't it? <laughs> Who's the watch for? It's for me. It was supposed to be a surprise. Ah, oh, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> it's a little cracker. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, are you two at it again? Oh, hang on. It's Mr. Selfridge. Who? You. Perfume retailing millionaire. Oh, don't worry. They'll sell today. Oh. Me and Terry have gone up market. We reckon that's where we went wrong. Hang on. We might learn something here. Now, don't mock, Dad. We're going up to Walton Village. I reckon they'll buy our gear there. No, you don't have a time. You won't sell them now. You won't sell them after Christmas. Well, I'll see you down the swan later and I'll buy you the pint out of the profits. All right. <laughs> about your poor old mother? Well, you'd have to settle some pay for you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, I was afraid you might say that. See you later. ta -da, love. See you, love. Well, do you want your Christmas present now, or do you want to leave it till later on? I'll tell you what. Put it under the Christmas tree and I'll have it Christmas morning as a nice surprise. Don't let the bus catch you clock watching. I'm just waiting for high noon. I don't know who's going to be more nervous, me or Trevor Johnson. Him, I expect. Oh, I don't know, Polly. I've got to prove myself on this one. Such a peddling little account, printer from Billinge. Well, exactly. And I want to get on. You don't get on in this business by making heavy weather of people like Trevor Johnson. Oh, I'd hate to stand in your way, Heather Huntington. Don't worry. You won't. Oh, the Iron Lady. You going to Belfast tonight? Yes. Now, do you want to come? Well... Oh, I see. You wouldn't be expecting to hear from Adrian, would you? You never know. I mean, I did mention that we'd be having drinks in the office and... Mm, talking of drinks, probably put the kettle on. Well, I wish I had a pound for every time I'd heard that. <laughs> I don't know how you feel when your parents are called Jack and Jill. It's almost as bad. I'm sorry you won't be having Christmas dinner with us at the hotel. Mm. Oh, I bet it'll be gorgeous. Should we get a turkey, then? George can have a parson's nose. You should have got most of this by now. Oh, should I? What should you have been doing? You know what I mean. We should have it by now. Oh, there's plenty of bargains you can get at Christmas if you know where to shop. Well, I hope so. Now, should we have a turkey for Christmas Day and a piece of pork for Boxing Day? Sounds all right to me. George, what do you think, George? About what? A turkey on Christmas Day and a piece of pork for Boxing Day. Yep. 
Are you listening to me? Of course I am. Go on, then. What did I say? Turkey for Christmas, pork for Boxing Day. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Marie, love, I'm just trying to read the paper. Well, I want to get it sorted out now. I don't want you turning your nose up at it on the day. <laughs> right. We could have chickens or capons. What do you think, Michelle? I honestly don't mind. I quite like turkey. George. George. Yes, Marie. Michelle says she doesn't mind capons or turkey, so we're going to leave it up to you. <sighs> I don't mind if we have turkey, capons, pork or beans on toast. I'd just like to read the paper in peace. I'm going to let that pass because of your nose. Well, if we have capons, I think we should have three. Three capons or one big turkey. Sounds an awful lot, Marie. Just only us three and Gary and little George. I'm going to put a place out for our Petra. Oh, don't do that. It's just going to be too sad. I think she'll be home for Christmas. Well, if she is, smashing, but don't go putting a place out for her. Why not? It's her house. Don't you think it's a bit spooky? No, I don't. I think she'll be home for Christmas, and I can't think of anything nicer than having a place set for her, that's all. We're talking about your sister, Michelle, not the ghost of Christmas past. Well, don't do it, Marie. I've made my mind up. George, will you tell her not to do it? I've got me reasons. Think of the kids. George, will you tell Marie to think of the kids? What about the kids? They love turkey or capons. Marie's going to set out a place for our Petra. You what? I think our Petra will be home on Christmas Day and I'm going to get a meal ready for her, that's all. You're going to do what? It's no big thing. No big thing? You really expect us to sit round the table eating our Christmas dinner and watch one meal going cold? <laughs> it's really weird, that, Marie. The worst thing's the kids. Well, I said that. It's going to frighten them. Oh, no, it's not. They're going to love it. They're going to go back to school after the holidays saying we had a seance on Christmas Day or, or that we had sacrifices to God knows who for Auntie Petra's return. Sacrifices? Yeah, bits of turkey or capons or whatever we end up with. It really is really, really weird, that, Marie. Have you been to see Mrs O'Rourke again? Yeah. Yeah, I should have known. But what am I supposed to do? The police are useless. And what did Mrs O'Rourke tell you? That our Petra would be home on Christmas Day. <laughs> Was she as definite as that? Well, not quite. Yeah, I thought as much. as another five I conned out here. Mrs O'Rourke's very good. She predicted Liverpool would win the league last season. Marie, everybody predicted Liverpool would win the league last season. I don't think that's enough evidence to buy another cape on. You were that out looking at it. Hey, it's a little beauty, this girl, honestly. And I won't ask you where you got the money from. <laughs> don't, love. Don't worry, I haven't sold any of your tools. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. Where are you going, anyway? Hunting again. You've got it. Foraging round the swan, eh, for a few nuts and crisps, that sort of thing? You never know, I might come back with a sheep or an ox. Ox flavoured crisps, you mean? Well, you never know your luck. And it's nice to have a few bob in your pocket. I might even go to the match on Monday, to bank holiday. Oh, might you? Yeah, it's just a thought. Six, five, five four, three, three two, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he set that to go off just before last orders. Do you know when I bought you that? I thought it might encourage you to take up jogging, you know, without having a stopwatch on. Hey, is that the time? It's supposed to be Matty at 12 o'clock. You might have some game for us. Game? As in hunting. I don't see why it has to be in here. Because you've got the biggest office next to Mr Hargreaves and we can't have it in there, can we? Well, I don't see why not, seeing as he's the one who always encourages us to have a Christmas drink. Being very ratty, if I may say so, Mrs Huntington. Just trying to work. It is what we're here for, you know. I presume the bank manager hasn't phoned. Mm, correct. Well, there's plenty of time. Mm. You know, he'll one way or the other, won't he? I mean, that's just professional etiquette. Oh, yes, he will. And then if he phones later, he's just as likely to say then that he'll grant the overdraft. Mm. I just wanted to get away a bit earlier as well. Why? Well, I'm driving up to Scotland. I'm going to catch the ferry across to Ireland. Couldn't get a flight. Oh. It's your last chance, Polly. Well, I hope he's worth it. Whatever. Suppose he doesn't get in touch. You'll probably have a lonely Christmas. <laughs> ah, drinks. Help yourselves, everyone. Come on now, 
bottle, get your smelly, the last ones now. In order the last ones, one pound a bottle, one pound a bottle. Oh, come on, don't be out, what? Come here, forget that. Hey, I'm down to what we paid for it, Nancy. Yeah, well, there's nothing down for it. It's all over Liverpool. What is a warning in the paper about cheap perfume? Oh, no. It can cause a severe reaction to the skin. It's not worth the light. Being had, sir. Good and proper. It's wicked stuff. And well, that's that, then. Don't suppose Victor had, um... Do you believe in Father Christmas, Sally? No. I think we'd have pints. So could I. Got any money? No. Oh, Merry Christmas. We should have gone up Walton. They don't read the post up there, do they? Well, they must do, mustn't they? All right, boys. All right, All right lads, how's it going? Bye, boys. Do you think your dad would give you the sub? What, you mean between us, Ted? Come on, let's give it a go. Morning. Morning. What happened to the other fella? Anyway, it's a Hello. Hello, Trevor. I hope you don't mind me coming in, but we were in the city shopping. No, of course not. You're very welcome, but I'm afraid there's no news. Oh, heck. I've been practising what to say. If it was good or bad, I haven't thought of anything for no news. Well, just say you have a drink, because that's all we can do. That and wait. Drop a beer, please. Oh, red or white? We only have wine, I'm afraid. Red, then, please. Mrs. Johnson. Still round the shops. We don't get into Liverpool very often, so she's making the most of it. I told her to go easy on the spending, though, just in case. Very wise. Tyler. There you go. Cheers. Thanks, Dad. Tar, son. Yes, you've got a lot to learn these two, Matty, haven't you? It smells all right. I just take the top layer of your skin off. All right, don't rub it in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I reckon we should drop it back on Victor's toes. Yeah, well, we'll have a go, but it won't get us any crimble money, will it, sir? Listen, you two should know better to have any dealings with that Victor fella. Oh, mind you, they always say there's someone worse off than yourself. <laughs> All right, George, lads, what have you been doing? You promise not to laugh? Well, of course not. That looks pretty serious. I got hit on the nose with a white plane snooker. <laughs> <laughs> Some soft melt sent this to Petra and Gavin. Yeah, there must be loads of people who still don't know. Oh, Marie, this one's addressed to me. You shouldn't go opening other people's letters. Marie, what's the matter? It's from our Petra. Where's Roger? He's usually here by now. <laughs> well, he's, he's not coming this year. Oh, why not? He's got a lot on. Oh, he's still working hard, is he? Driving two desks? Something like that. His absence was noted at the official dinner. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it was, but that was unavoidable as well, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Your friend over there doesn't seem like much fun. My client. Let's go and have a word with him. <laughs> You're out of You're going to tell me to cheer up, aren't you? You're a mind reader, Trevor. It doesn't take much mind reading, that. I'm sure Mr. Hume's very busy today. The holiday's coming up. I'm sure he is. It was my dad's business, you know. 
Anyway, Top end. My mother was from the bottom end of the village, but they always got on. Mixed marriage, eh? Aye, a mixed marriage. A man and a woman, eh? It's the best kind. <laughs> It should be easy. It was addressed to you. But there were loads addressed to me. That's what I mean. If you hadn't told everybody that you'd moved here. Oh, take the notice of me. I'm mean, such a model from here and from her. Yeah, but you would have thought she'd have put more than this, though. Saw your advert. I'm fine, honestly. Don't worry. I'll be in touch when I'm ready. Love to all. Merry Christmas, Petra. It's enough. She's alive and well. It's enough, Michelle. Let's go and tell George. Go down the swan? Yeah, why not? I feel like celebrating. All right, come on. Hey. <laughs> open your, open your eyes. Come on, George, right down. Make sure yeah. they can't see. Okay. okay. There we go. Prawn cocktail. <laughs> oh, dead easy, that smoky bacon. <laughs> Come on, give us a hand. Barry. Barry, it's dodgy, this. I'll stick my neck out. Uh, Worcester sauce and cheese and onion at the same time, eh? <laughs> How about that? Thing? That's amazing, actually. He seems as well, you know, Matty, lad. It's not just a pretty face, this lad. Hey, just because I'm plastered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you miserable pain. It is Christmas, isn't it? It's the first Christmas for years. We've been skint. When did you, uh... Discover this rare gift. Give George a slip it up and see if you can analyse it. <laughs> what do you make of that, man? Well, it's initially pleasant, but uh, I'd suspect a crude chemical base, caustic, or another alkali, possibly. Yeah, mm. I told you now, that's straight from the old. Oh, yeah, you might see me. That's probably made in some shady part of town by the bucket folk. <laughs> Are you working over there, because Mr. Well, well, I was off anyway. Hey, look at that. Now, no, caustic's used for stripping paint. Don't let the manager see your deficient tables. Hey, Dad, it's not a basin and it's clean, and it, look? Well, I'm not surprised. That's not perfume you're selling. It's table cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I'll always remember me, Dad. In a pinny covered in ink. He sounds a marvellous man. Yeah, I still go in strong in retirement. Bowls a lot now, you know. Crown green. Okay. What's the matter? I don't know what you think if I let the business go under. When he retired, he just left it all to me. Not beaten the ass. Hello. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hello. Could I just have a word, Heather? Yes, of course. Excuse me, Mr. Trevor. What is it? It's Adrian. What is he here? Oh, no, but he just popped in on his way back from the slaughterhouse. Oh, don't tell me. Let me guess. While I'm over in Ireland, and I'm going to be pushing it, you want to entertain Adrian back at the house. Well... He has invited me to a Christmas party. Very nice. For all over Christmas. Could be. Hmm. You don't lose much time, do you, Polly? I haven't got much time to lose. We're nearly at the beginning of a new year. <laughs> what can I say to you? Good luck. <laughs> Listen, I'm off. Mr H has given us the nod. Have a lovely Christmas if I don't see you back at the house. Well, Polly, before you go, just confirm one thing. What? Sid has definitely come back to Salford, hasn't he? Guaranteed. <laughs> I must go, cos I'm meeting Adrian at his office party. Bye-bye. Did you know it any better than that? It's a bit of a crisp stuff in the house. What flavour is it? <laughs> Real old <laughs> dad. Well? <laughs> well, we've got a table cleaning contract, haven't we, sir? Yeah, have you, lads? How much? 30 pence a table. <laughs> Well, it's not going to make you a millionaire, but at least we'll have a few bob in our pockets, won't we? Yeah, and it means we get rid of this stuff as well. Yeah. When are you going to start? Well, the manager said we can start anywhere as long as we don't disturb the customers. Oh, go on, start over there. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hey, do you want a tip? Yeah, go ahead, George. Well, dilute it with water. Come on. Thanks a lot, Snuffy. <laughs> Definitely got something stuck in here, I tell you. Looks like a, a beef and onions. <laughs> hey, look out, here comes trouble. I heard that. Yeah, all right, love, I'm only joking. It is Christmas. Guess what? They've cancelled it. What? Christmas. <laughs> oh, shut up, you dap and melt. Yeah, leave that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's from Petra. Oh, I told you it was priced and not. <laughs> hey, get me a gin and bitter lemon and our Michelle of the Cardi and Cake. Well, where is Petra then? I don't know. We can't find the envelope. But I'm not bothered now. I know she's all right. <laughs> hey, make them large ones, George. <laughs> That's very nice, that kid. That's really nice. 
God, it's all right for you fellas, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's all right for you now you're here, isn't it? <laughs> Let's have a look at your calm girl, will you? Is that your body cleaning table? Yeah. I think I'm just going to have a word with Terry. If you must. <laughs> Do you know what, girl? That's great news, then. That's great news. No news is good news? Not in this instance. Hargreaves? Just a moment. Hello, Mrs. Huntington speaking. Hello, Mr. Hume. Thank you very much. And the same to you. Goodbye. Merry Christmas, Mr. Johnson, and a prosperous new year. It's all right, isn't it? It's not against any code of conduct or anything. <laughs> not to my knowledge. <laughs> you handled all that very well. Oh, it was never anything to rot the stock market, I realised that. No, you kept you cool, showed confidence. That's a sign of quality, which is more than I can say for this wine. <laughs> I've got to go now, but... Oh, Trevor, you shouldn't have. She saved my business. Oh, that may be overstating it a little. I mean it. <laughs> and you're my dower Christmas. Oh. I'll be in touch. Bye-bye. <laughs> not that often the client leaves here so happily. Oh, it is Christmas. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hit the same again. Yeah, I'll give it a hand. I'll give it a hand. Beep! <laughs> I got me money back. Oh, you did, you did, Joe. Of course I did. He's not selling meat off perfume. But I thought it was his mate that sold it to you. Same thing. Anyway, I got me money back. And now I'm going to make room for another drink. The job to come with you. Of course not. What's the matter with you? Been thinking about that card from Petra. Oh, I know it's great, isn't it? <laughs> but how do we know it is from Petra? Because it says it is. So? Well, we didn't put the address in the paper. Only Petra knows it was meant for her. Not if there was anybody new and you were putting the advert in. Oh, but nobody would be cruel enough to fake a card like that. Anyway, it was her own way. Oh, that's easy enough to fake. Well, for God's sake, don't let Marie hear you talking like this. She's really happy today. Oh, I won't say anything, and don't you either, eh? It's just a thought between the two of us. I wouldn't do a thing like that. You know, to have anything to gain. Who knows, eh? Nice. <coughs> All for the road. Sheila, are you dashing off? Oh, I'm in a terrible hurry. I'm going up to Scotland to get the ferry across to Ireland. Oh, I didn't realise. You did say you were going to be on your own. I was just coming to ask you for Christmas dinner. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thanks, anyway. Good God, look at this lot. <laughs> Listen, love. I know how you feel. I've lost people as well. You've got to come to ours for your dinner. I insist. Ooh. All the best. You'll be ever so welcome. Won't you, George? Yeah, of course. Well, it's really kind of you, Marie, but I'm just dashing off to Ireland. Oh. Bye-bye. I think she's made her mind up, love. Oh, you'd know, wouldn't you? You just wait till our Petra gets home and then you find out the truth about your baddie. There's more to him than cleaning tabletops. I know. Hey, come on, Michelle. I don't know, love. Come on, come on. Put your hand back, George. Yeah, okay. Put your hand back. Come on, love. Come on. Merry Christmas, everyone. All the best, Heather. Didn't take her very long to get out the clothes, did it? 5.83. Ha, 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 ha,